Welcome back. Welcome back, world. Welcome back, Shadow Nation, to the one, the only, mystifying Oracle Radio. Your ghost man at Demon Hunter's show, Demon Hunter. I gotta talk a little louder then. There we go. So much for pondering the difference between two different worlds. I have to stay in this world. There you go. Special thanks to all our homes, all our sponsors, Stitcher Smart Radio, Planet Paranormal, Paranormal A Radio, Canadian Style Radio Network. Of course, the uh, Ten of Home Healthcare. Good people ready to help the ones you love, especially if you're in Indianapolis, Indiana, because that's where they're at. Ten of HHC.com. The SYL Project. Give some love. Share some love today. Everybody needs love, mate. Hey. Check them out, the SYL Project. Tom, welcome back to studio, everybody. Yeah. I love John. What's that? What's going on? I need some love. Yeah, welcome back to uh, the world, pal, from your vacation. I know. Well, it wasn't like I was really gone. Everybody watched me on vacation. Yes, everybody watched you. you your computer, you, you said you had some computer issues today. That might have been what cut you out, huh? You're sounding okay now. I hope so. I certainly hope so. It. Uh, well, you know, we do have some high winds going on up here in Connecticut, and... Uh, since I live back in the woods, maybe something happened. But yeah. it seems to be doing okay now. Mm, well, so good. Let's hope we sound okay to the public. Yeah. Well, let us know, guys, if we don't. And if uh, you don't think it sounds good, there's not much we can do. But anyway, <laughs> uh, <laughs> welcome back to studio. What a great time uh, to be alive. If you're anybody else other than me, because I'm in the middle of selling the studio. Yes. Finding it's a so new sad. place. Yeah. Finding a new place to uh, to uh, broadcast from, guys, and a new place to live. So, I've been on the house market. the The houses uh, stay on the market about well, they're averaging about four days now. Yeah. So, literally six o'clock in the morning, a house goes on the market. The other day, we ran out. Uh, the wife called me at work. She said, "We gotta. We love this house. You gotta put a, you know, a a, a, a price on it." And I called the guy, and he said it sold. And that was by noon. So six a.m. to noon, the house was sold. And uh, we finally got an accepted offer, so we'll see. Got the inspector out tomorrow and everything. I'm hoping it's haunted. You think it's haunted, Sean? I, you know, I, I'm hoping that it <laughs> is haunted. I, I've tried to do that. Me and you have been, you know, investigators for hundreds of years now. Indeed. And uh, it's it's uh, funny the things we we see, but you never you don't know if you want them in your home, you know. <laughs> We have lots. Gee, of, I can't imagine. Yeah, we, well, we have lots of uh, we have lots of uh, spooks and stories to tell, but I don't know if I would like to sleep in a house where, you know, the lady in white's roam in the halls. I think I would. I think I would. I don't know if I'd be married still. Mm-hmm. Your kids be calling up, going, "Dad, we don't want to come and visit this weekend." Yeah, that's true. Anyway, speaking of which, Nathan, real estate on the market. The Amityville Horror House back on sale in time for cinema scares. <gasps> yeah, yeah, yeah. For a house that supposedly has nothing wrong with it, it certainly goes up on the market quite a lot, Sean. Yeah, with an asking price of, go ahead and guess, what do you think the beautiful Amityville House would be worth? Well, town, what town is it in? Oh, Amity. Well, <laughs> yeah. and, and where is that located, Sean? I don't know. I don't know. Let's see here. Amity, New York. Amity, New York. It's out there on the island. Let me go ahead and tell you. 1.1 million. I would have said 1.4, so I would have uh, been a little high there. Yeah, less than a uh, the going price of a refurbished inner city semi. What's not to love? Yeah. 108 Ocean Avenue, guys, back on the market. 1.1 mil for that, in case you were wondering. Because I started looking at it. Because, you know, if you and I... Could find some investors and buy the Amityville house. We could turn it into a gold mine with the radio show and the television shows we've done, and we do tours a couple of weekends with the Ghost Man Demon Hunter. Now, you know what? The neighbors would probably say that we were running a business out of it, and they'd shut us down. That's all right. There's more than one way to skin a goat. But <laughs> <laughs> anyway, guys, the taxes alone are thirty thousand a year. Alone Welcome to the Northeast. The Northeast is crazy. It is. I think it's still in New York. But. Yeah. Anyway, it's back on the market. I thought that was cool because they got the new movie coming out on top of that, too. They do. And on top of that, yeah. you and I this weekend both went to see. Yeah. The Conjuring 2. Da, 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 da. How does that start? It starts in the. Well, you tell me. You've seen it. In the Amityville Horror House. Yes. Mm-hmm. And a uh, few glimpses into the story there that you don't get in the movie. Right. A little bit of it's taken a bit, uh, bit out, like added to. Let's just say it's embellished. Yeah, 
But uh, that's what movies are about, folks. If you wanted to watch the real thing, you'd watch a documentary. Yeah. Well, it's kind of funny because the um, the stuff that you and I have seen over the years, 18 plus, something like that, I was thinking back the other day, been interested in paranormal all our life. That's why we got into this stuff. But what I seen last, uh, 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 The Conjuring, when I went out to see it, and I don't want to go into specifics for you guys, folks, but I am definitely giving it a 7.5 out of 10, Nathan. Get, what's yours? Go ahead and score it. I was giving it a 6.5. Really? Yeah. Definitely loved the first one better. I did like the first one better. The first one, this one, the storyline in The Conjuring 2 has yeah. less holes in it than the original Conjuring story. This is true. This is However, true. this one has a lot more CGI, and I'm not a fan of CGI, especially not in a, in a ghost movie. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's kind of what killed it a little bit for me, but still, in, there, in its defense, it's a supernatural-based movie about uh, pioneers in the field, and i got to accept that. And it was good. It was good. It had some spooky parts. and uh, it, it was a little too cartoony in a few parts. Yes. And I felt that uh, there, there is a image of a demon in there that looked like the younger brother from the the devil from legend <laughs> legend and uh you know a few and you know i i felt that the makeup they did for the possessed little girl yeah. was stunning it was you know they barely had to do anything and she looked evil yeah and i liked it i liked the way they went with that and then all of a sudden the cgi started popping up and I just sat back in my chair and went, okay, I'm not scared anymore. It's, uh... well, I almost felt like, and guys, again, we're not putting down The Conjuring 2. It's, it's epic. It's got everything you want, the supernatural. It's based on a true story. Um, you know, the spooky bumps in the night kind of stuff. It, very cool. Even though I believe The Conjuring, the first Conjuring captured that original Amityville horror feel. Do you know what I'm saying? Yes. It, they, I, I can't even explain it. There was just a, a feel to it, the, the, like the, with the exorcism, the dark scenes. I mean, even people talking about what stick of gum you ate if you were in the exorcist movie was scary. Right. Just the background with the leaves falling and a nun walking in the way background, her head thing flapping in the wind. And you know, it was it was creepy. But I don't I think they lost some of that with well, this new one. A few interesting things to look at it, this movie for one. Um. I've also watched some of the background clips, yeah. the uh, second camera clips. They showed images of when Lorraine actually came on set and visited with the family, and they were yeah. so happy to see her and all that stuff. However, reading articles about mm -hmm. the Enfield investigation, and I don't know if these are true or not. This is somebody's saying this on the Internet. One of the original investigators mm -hmm. on the Enfield case claims that Ed and Lorraine were never invited by the actual investigators to come and when they did show up uninvited they only stayed for one day really yes no 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 wait a minute you're gonna bring this up and you're not gonna have anything to quote or or is that gonna be in the news later um well if you want me to bring it up no. I'll bring it up. well you go uh, ahead and look that up uh we'll be more about the movie and i'll bring it up right here i'll get well, the... yeah we're gonna do that while you're doing that how about tonight's guest tonight's guest yeah special thanks to uh nathan for temple pausing and looking that up guys tonight's guest for over 17 years he has starred in numerous television shows from home improvement boston public strong medicine and of course the cult classic eerie indiana his production company shake that fro productions has produced over three short films that he has both directed and starred in he's a stanford university grad and he's stopping by tonight Actor, director, Mr. Justin Shankaro in the house, buddy. And I know this one means a lot to you, Sean, because it means a lot. Well, you know, well, you know, well, you know, when I first it came out in the 90s, I have to look up exactly when it came out. Um, so I would have been, you know, I was born in 75. I think I got five years on Shankaro here. <laughs> yeah, I think he's younger than me. He's got me beat by like five years. But uh, yeah, man, I used to watch it. I was there in Indiana and for the longest time. And I can't go too much into it because I already talked to Justin. I told him, man, I get ready. I got some trivia for you. So all you Erie, Indiana fans, stay tuned because we're going to be playing the top nine Erie, Indiana trivia with old Justin. And I just don't think he's ready. I, I bet he's at home right now cracking the books on, oh, God, what shows was I in? What, <laughs> what episodes? 
But, uh, yeah, he played Simon Holmes on there, one of my favorite characters. He was the adorable little boy. He was kind of like the new uh, Eddie, well, not Eddie, Leave it to Beaver. He kind of reminded me of Eddie Leave it to Beaver. True that. I can see that. Yeah, true that. But anyway, I did follow it. I watched it. I think it was amazing. And who knows what might be in the future for Erie, Indiana. You never know. It's fun to talk about. I, I don't know why it went off the air. It had everything. It had, the, you know, the kids getting out, man, like we did on our bikes. And, the, you know, even in the intro, Bigfoot goes through the garbage in my neighborhood, Elvis. And he's like, thank you, little paper boy. And, uh, you know, and he was in there with Omri Katz. And a lot of these people, you see a lot of them went off to star in other things. Do you ever do that? You look at the TV shows, series from when you liked when you were a kid, and you noticed that Toby Maguire was in it, an episode. <laughs> like, you're eating Oh, that it. happens all the time. You'll be sitting there, and you'll, you'll be watching it, and all of a sudden you're like, is, is that really a young, you know, Leonardo the Crap? Cra- oh, sorry, I almost said his name. <laughs> the, Leonardo the Cappy? Hey, know? man, he was in The Reverend. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, guys, if you're just tuning in, uh, this is the G&D Show. We're not usually a movie. We're not always a movie entertainment show. We do talk about other things, like anything strange and weird. But but this is a nice crossover, Sean. It is. You like it? Are we still crossing over, or I'm still... still crossing over. Hey, by the way, Sean, from Week in the Weird at weekintheweird.com, conjuring the true story, Enfield Poltergeist investigator says Ed and Lorraine Warren never investigated the case. Wow. Um, it's a... <laughs> Hot on the heels of the debut of the trailer of Conjuring 2, Guy Len of uh, Playfield, one of the original investigators of the famous British ghost ap- appearance, yeah. who says that the controversial paranormal researchers Ed and Lorraine Warren were never involved with the case. Ah. So uh, the two files of Ed and Lorraine Warren, blah, blah, blah. And it goes on to say, like I said, that they appeared on... Uh, they appeared for one day after not being in, invest, in, uh, invited, c- conjured up their own evidence, and then moved on. Conjured up their own evidence, eh? Huh? Well, whatever. There's always somebody, man. We've There's been... always somebody got to argue it. I mean, I'm sure he's sitting around there going, why wasn't I in the movie? Right. <laughs> I'm sure if they would have called him, he would have conjured up some evidence of his own. So, whatever. But, uh, yeah, I mean, hey, man, I'm not, hey. I'm not saying that those things are 100% accurate. They say they're not in the Some detail. Deep, folks. <laughs> it says it it's not. based on yeah. the story. Mm-hmm. Extremely. Like, it was a house. <laughs> it was in England. <laughs> it was in England. And they said they had ghosts. Anyway, I, talking about The Conjuring 2, guys, uh, and we were trying to get this cat on the show. And uh, you remember this, Nate. It's been a while. Yeah. But uh, he's so busy. But the um, actor Joseph Bashara is the one that plays in Insidious and Conjuring. He does all the creepy characters. Mm-hmm. Did you know that? I I did because you had told me. Yeah, I didn't he, know it on my own. He, it's a dude. He did Bathsheba and the red face guy and Insidious and all that and da 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 da. So yeah, it was it was totally cool, man. I um, I cannot wait to see what the what the, what are the skeptics saying. Of the movie or of the story? Of the movie. Of the movie, basically the th- same things we've said so far tonight. <laughs> are they are they giving it uh, 6.5, 7.5 range? No, no, but uh, I, I don't know the ranges they're giving on it. They're, they're basically saying, you know, fun story, not as good as the first one. No. Um, but little known fact here, Sean, if you're actually a reader of the Ed and Lorraine Library, all the books they put out, mm-hmm. Ed, before his passing did say in an interview that one of the strangest things in his life was the fact that since he was a child, he felt he had been envisioning a nun in his dreams. A nun was visiting him in his dreams since he was a child. Yeah. And anybody who sees the movie will understand the relation to that. Yeah. You just gave it away now. What are they going to do? There you go. Yeah. Anyway. (laughs) You're terrible, Nathan. You're so terrible. Oh, well. Uh Uh-oh. You hear the music, guys. It's that special time of the week, G&D Show in the News, where uh, it's always exciting. It's Sometimes it's fresh, and it's strange and weird, and it's straight from the G&D Show vaults. And it starts right now. There you go. I don't hear so much of the wave noise when we have some background music. When I talk in the demon voice, you don't get the wave. Yeah, I like it. Anyway, Sean. Yeah. 
Bobby Brown. Yeah. Make this celebrity to claim having sex with a ghost. This is good. I, I Actually, I'm interested in this. <laughs> That's right, folks. It's time for G&D in the news. That's weird news that Sean and I pick right out of the paper because we like the titles. Of course, we haven't read them, so we make a lot of mistakes. And every time we make a mistake, you take a drink. That's why we call it the G&D drinking game. Uh, so if you're planning on doing anything like drive your car, uh, don't listen to the G&D <laughs> news show. And uh, if you have anything else important to do tonight, like, say, watch your kids, uh, please Listen responsibly. That's right. There's Bobby Brown, latest celebrity to claim having sex with a ghost. Okay. If Bobby Brown wants to say he's had sex with a ghost, that's his prerogative. That's right. It was from the Huffington Post. During his 2020 interview Tuesday night, the former New Edition singer told a new story about a very bizarre experience involving a ghost. Mm -hmm. I bought a mansion in Georgia. This was really, really spooky place, Brown told Robert Roberts. Robin Roberts, have a drink, folks. Uh, <laughs> but yes, one time I woke up and yeah, a ghost. I was, I was being mounted by a ghost. Oh. Brown didn't go into details about his supernatural sex session, such as when it happened, but yeah. emphasized he was completely sober. When he did the de- deed. Okay. I wasn't high, Brown said. I wasn't tripping. Brown isn't the first celebrity to claim having to... Go- got da- <laughs> Have a drink, folks. Yeah. To claim they got down with a ghost. In April 2014, Ukrainian-born actress Natasha Blasik scared up a lot of publicity after claiming she had sex with a ghost on two occasions and found the experience really, really pleasurable. Yeah. <laughs> there you go, Sean. <laughs> I'm like, hey, that, that's, uh, I like that kind of stuff. You know, uh, it's cheap date, too, you know? They don't eat a lot. Yeah, they don't eat a lot. And uh, what are you going to do, man, if you can go out with a ghost? Hey, read the next one. Go ahead. I want you to do that. <laughs> of course you do. Yeah, fire hey, Sean, I'm only telling this story right now because, uh, you know, for my day job, I'm uh, an exterminator. Yes, you are. And I got called out on a job just like this. Okay. Snake slithers out of ceiling in video that will haunt your dreams. Oh. Okay. I've actually seen this happen. It's the stuff of nightmares. That's what the Greenwood, South Carolina man said after finding two giant snakes dangling from the hallway ceiling when he returned home from work on Tuesday. Oh, man. Mark Hoyt had only passed under the attic door when he returned to find creepy crawlies squirming in their glory in front of his face. Okay. It had just slithered around. I could see the two heads and their tongues flipping. He told the Huffington Post on Thursday by phone. Of course, I was in shock, Hoyt right. said. But I thought my dad would really get a kick out of this, so I pulled out the phone and started shooting video. Hoyt's one-minute video has blown up the social media. It's been viewed by hundreds of thousands. It's been viewed, have a drink, folks, hundreds of thousands of times on Facebook, and millions more through other media outlets. Okay. But getting the snakes to go viral was apparently the easy part. Getting them to go was the whole story. Right. So uh, I propped my front door open and went to use a broom, kind of sweep them d- down to, <laughs> to the ground, made a little... Um, uh, have a drink. Yeah. Something to, to, to barrier to lead them to the front door, Height said. One of the snakes successfully made it to the door, only to charge right back into the house three times. Okay. Hoyt told, had, uh, Hoyt had to grab the I, I... persistent reptiles by the tail and toss them outside, finally removing them as one snake, uh, the second snake, he said, it's still in my house and I don't know where it is. <laughs> so, um... Sean, this has actually happened uh, on jobs that I've gone to. Uh, if you folks have telephone lines that lead to your house, you know, they're up there on the, on the attic, up against the attic, 
and you have a tree that touches those telephone lines, especially a thin tree, snakes will climb up the tree and then crawl right across the lines to get into your house. Yeah. Then when they're in your house, they don't know how to get back out, so they crawl right down through your lighting and attic yeah. accesses. So uh, this That's happens, cool. folks. So uh, if you got those trees right next to those lines, cut them down. That's nasty. Anyway, up in the news next, Trump supporter sees the Donald on bathroom floor tile. <laughs> this can't be good for his campaign. I don't know. I think he's going to bump up at least 15 in the point standings. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, guys, good friends. Uh, thanks to our special good friends, the HuffPost Weird News. Anyway, here's what they say. A Donald Trump supporter swears he can see the Donald in a piece of bathroom tile in his bathroom. That's what he's saying, Nathan. Well, we've discussed paradelia for years, Sean. <laughs> yeah. Even more amazing, the man thinks it's a good thing. Oh, Clayton Linton of Middleton, Virginia. I got all that right. Don't worry about it. You don't need to check on me. Was sitting on his toilet recently looking at a newly tiled bathroom floor when he saw the Trump tile. This cannot be, there's no way, Little told WTVRTV, and that fateful moment when he saw the image, clear as day. Linton swears the tile shows Trump standing with his arms folded. What are the odds, Linton said? One in a trillion? That's a question. <laughs> he comments like that might seem to Trump logic, but take a closer look. Linton said he sees Trump's face on the upper left corner. Feel free to step all over it. Oh, Oh, Linton swears he's not the only one who can see Trump in the tile. He said the people who installed the tile told him they saw Trump in the square piece as well. Linton would like to show off the Trump tile to the man himself when he appears at nearby Richmond Coliseum on Friday, the station reports. Hey, Mr. Linton, how about we don't try to bum rush Trump's rally to show him your piece of... <laughs> Bathroom. Pick the tile. tile up off the floor, bring it to the rally, anyway. and show them there. It's, uh... <laughs> Trump! Hey, I got a tile for you, Mr. Trump! <laughs> oh, I could just see Secret Service, a guy running towards yeah. Trump with a tile in his hands. That'd be nuts, man. That'd be nuts. I could see that with all the weirdos in the world. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure, yeah. I could see this happening. Anyway, Nathan. John. You think it's about that time? I, it's almost that time, Sean. Since we're in the news, we do want to send our love out to all those folks down in Orlando, Florida. Yes. Where I just was all last week and say, you know, the shooting that took place th in the early morning hours today uh, was horrible. And we send our love out to you, folks. Absolutely. If you haven't heard about this, folks, it's horrible news. A uh, po probable terrorist attack in Orlando, Florida has cost the life of 50 people and another more than 50 injured. So our love out to these folks. And Sean... Um, what can we say? It's horrible. God bless them, guys. Every one of them. Anyway, tonight's guest. For over 17 years, he has starred in the numerous television shows from Home Improvement, Boston Public, and Strong Medicine. And of course, the cult classic Gary, Indiana. Tonight, director, actor Justin Shakerow is going to be here in studio. We're going to play the G&D trivia game with him. Top nine questions. See if he can handle the heat, Nathan. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I don't know if he can handle it or not, but we're going to find out because uh, one of my childhood favorite stars, I love the guy to death. I tell you, each week on this show, guys, we support the little man here. We play an independent band, one we know, we love. Tonight's band is Break the Bands. The name of the song is We'll Get Ourselves Into the TV News. We'll get Sounds ourselves. like our goal. It does sound like our goal. <laughs> Anyway, Nathan, check your computer when you come back. We've got that strong wave sound. Maybe you can reboot or something. I don't know. I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll watch my board to see if you recall or however you want to play it, okay? Sounds good to me. All right. Na ladies and gentlemen of the Shadow Nation, Nathan. Sean. We'll be right back, guys.
Welcome back, Shadow Nation, to the one, the only, Mystifying Oracle Radio, your ghost man and demon hunter show. Tonight's guest, for over 17 years, he's starred in numerous television shows from Home Improvement, Boston Public, Strong Medicine, and of course, the cult classic, Erie, Indiana. His production company's named Shake That Fro Productions. He's produced three short films that he's both directed and starred in. And that's just the tip of the iceberg, guys. A Stanford University grad. Please help us welcome tonight to studio actor-director Justin Shankaro. Justin, what's up, brother? Hey, hey, how are you? So glad to be here. <laughs> it's the. I feel like I'm talking to the little boy in Erie, Indiana. <laughs> Erie was my favorite show. I absolutely loved it. We had such a blast shooting it. It was, it was so fun. Oh, you know, man, we we get so many people. We've been blessed over the years. We're going to our 10th year doing this, and this is a big one for me because I grew up with you and Marshall Teller rolling down the streets of Erie, Indiana. You know, I, I still look for Erie, Indiana here. <laughs> I don't know where it's at. You guys never drew out a clear map. There was a map, but it wasn't clear. <laughs> you know. I know. I know, and working on Erie was even, even, even more fun, if you can imagine. I mean, I was 11 when I was on the show initially, and... Yeah. Almost every week, we just had such cool sets. In fact, for one of the episodes, I don't know if you saw The Lost World, where everything that you lose goes, you know, like that one pair of sock. You can never find that sock. It goes to the Lost World. Oh, yeah, yeah. Those headphones, that one stick of gum. Yep. And that set alone, I think, cost a million dollars, which at the time, in 1991, was the most expensive set in the history. So as a, as a young actor, just being on that set was so incredible. And you know, we would have fog, and we had our little uh, hide ha- our hideout where we would put our clues. Yeah. It was it was an incredible show. Great writers, awesome oh. cast. It Listen, was a blast. I was kind of hoping, Justin, you knew how to get back to the Lost Hour place because I, th- <laughs> I think I think I've, I've, I've been trying to get back there for the last twenty years. In fact, uh, you know. 
with all of these revivals going on, I mean, X Files and Twin Peaks coming back. Yeah, man. I've, I've felt over the last couple of years that the audience would love to see Erie come back. And and uh, for the last few years, I've been speaking with the original creator, Carl Schaefer, who's a great buddy. In fact, who has that wonderful show Z Nation on, which I just shot up in oh, Spokane, Washington. Amazing. And. Uh, which was terrific. I had a blast shooting that. And, and so now Erie is with Lionsgate Television, and uh, you know we're hoping Lionsgate will bring Erie, Indiana back. So you know, you're fans of, the sh- of your show, write into Kevin Beggs at Lionsgate. Tell him, we want Erie back. I want right. to be back doing Erie. Well, I was gonna and, ask and if you. they find that lost world, maybe they can find our old TV show. That's what I was uh, trying to get to. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you guys beat me to it. You guys blocked me. <laughs> I had such a great buildup. Wow, what a! But I tell you what, Justin, take everybody back because we know about the cute little boy on Erie, Indiana. We know about the amazing uh, roles you played and the voiceover work. Oh my God, a lot of people don't even know you've been in everything, dude. Take us back. <laughs> take us back to a young Justin, where you started, where the passion came from. What were your hobbies? Did you like scary movies? Let's go. Sure. Well, I you know I started acting when I was five and a half. My first commercial that I got was for a Mattel toy, and I showed up on set, and they put me in a flying harness, and I got a fly as a five-and-a-half-year-old, and then they had a craft service table, and for your the fans of your show, if you don't know what that is, it's on set where they put a lot of food where you can just go and eat whatever you want. Yummy. So I was just thrilled. I was like, oh, my God, I get a fly, and there's free food? This is <laughs> awesome. I, I want to be an actor forever. And that was just that was sort of the, the beginning of my passion, and... I just loved it. Acting is so fun being on set. You have such a great family that you create. And then I had a, a, the wonderful joy of doing Hey Arnold, which was a great uh, Nickelodeon cartoon. That, In fact, we just did the uh, revival for Hey Arnold that's coming back on Nickelodeon pretty soon as two movies, which is very exciting. Right. And uh, then I got to go on and work on Erie, Indiana, which is my absolute favorite show. And Picket Fences I worked on for uh, four years on CBS. And, you know, I've been acting and directing ever since. It's it's just a, it's a joy to be able to work in our in our industry. It's it's a blast. Now, when you when you started out, Justin, you you grew up in California. Yes. And it was did it run in your family? Did mom and dad were they part of you know the film crowd or what? They, they actually weren't. I was. It was it was uh, interesting. My parents had a little French patisserie, a little bakery in Palos Verdes, which is about uh, it's a suburb of L.A. It's about an I would say about an hour outside of Los Angeles or out of Hollywood. Yeah. And, you know, when your parents are in the restaurant business, you, you tend to be there a lot. It's right. almost like a 24 seven job. And I would be running around as a three, four year old. And I, I guess they said that customers would come in because I had a lot of curly hair and a big fro. And they constantly tell my parents that I should be doing film and television. <laughs> I think they got sick and tired of hearing it. And they figured, well, let's try it and see if he likes it. And so, you know, they, they got me an agent, and I started auditioning, and I really enjoyed it. And then I got my first commercial, and that was it. I was off the races. I was like, I love this. This is fun. Is that how it usually starts in Hollywood? You get into the commercials, and then it goes from there? Typically, yeah. It seems like, uh, especially with kid actors, they tend to sort of, uh, you start with the commercials, and then if you do well, then you can sort of branch out, and you do like a guest appearance on a television show, and then you try and get a reoccurring where you have, more appearances on a TV show, and then, you know, if you're lucky enough, you get to be a series regular, so you're on every week on a television show, or, you know, you start doing independent films, and then you get to, you know, you get to be in studio films. You sort of, you typically, you work your way up, and it takes many years. I mean, of course, you hear about the people that, that get it overnight, but usually they've been working for 15, 20 years before they get a big break. Yeah. Yeah, definitely, man. And like I, you know, I'm a huge fan of everything you do. You've done some Ice oh, Age. thank you. That's really kind. You did some Ice Age, right? Yes, yeah, I did Ice Age. Uh, you know, I was the voice of Charlie Brown. Uh, I was the voice of uh, Little Sprout, um, the animation cartoon Pound Puppies, yeah. Ice Age, as you as you mentioned. Um, everything. The movie, Jerry Seinfeld, ton, tons, of, tons of cartoon and animation I've done, which is, such a blast. I mean, that's really fun. You get a script, and then you, you go to a, a, a sound stage, and you get in front of a microphone, and you really get to improvise all these different voices that you've created in your head, right. where you think you're crazy, but then actually somebody pays you to uh, <laughs> to do them out loud. It's, yeah. it's pretty cool. Now, growing up as a child actor, 
what, what's that like, man, with school and, and the pressures of day to day, you know, with punks and school and girlfriends and stuff like that? Uh, is it just right. a normal style life? I mean, because these kids are growing up watching you on television. Yeah. Well, I, it, for me, I was very lucky. I had a, you know, education was a big focus in my life when I was growing up. So, you know, my parents kept me pretty sheltered in terms of just focusing on my studies and uh, trying to do extracurricular activities. Um, you know, I just had a single, my mom, my mom and I were very tight and, and I would go to regular school. And then when I was working on set as an actor, then I would just have a a tutor that would work with me. But anytime that I wasn't on set, I'd be in regular school. So I think it was a great balance. I mean, that was the only life I really knew. I didn't know any other kind of lifestyle and kids treated me pretty fairly. So, I mean, it was a blast. I don't know. I always thought, uh, man, I wish I was uh, with you and Marshall on a bicycle going down the streets. Everything would have been better, you know? <laughs> Who did? Yeah, man? yeah, it was. It, it was pretty awesome. I mean, we we did the show for a year, and I wish we had done it for ten years because it was. I still have incredible memories from that from that one year. And you know, we're hoping that Erie comes back. I think that there's a, an the audience is still there for it. I would love to do it. And in fact, I think there's even a much bigger audience because. When we did it in 91, I mean, the Internet wasn't even invented. So I, I, there's, you know, there's a massive, I think, market appeal for a show like Erie on in today's market. And, uh, yeah. you know, hopefully we'll recognize that and bring the show back. Hell yes. Well, what do you think about that, Nathan? That's what I want to talk about. Erie, Indiana, the possibility of maybe coming back, Nate. What I'm you always ready to talk about TV comeback, Sean. You know that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Remember us, Justin. Remember us. <laughs> yes, yes. You- from your lips, I hope it happens. I yeah. mean, you guys make it happen. That'd be fantastic. Yeah, that'd be, well, yeah. well, Justin, I just wanted to ask you, you know, you're, you've got all this stuff piling on top of you. You know, do you ever get overly depressed? Because I did notice you on YouTube unable to get out of bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, you know, I like to make sometimes spoof little comedies and little sketches. I've done a bunch of improv. At, uh, there's a great improv place in L.A. called The Groundlings, and and Upright Citizens Brigade. So I've done tons of improv all my, all my life, and sometimes it's fun to do a little sketch comedy. So that's just, that was just part of it. <laughs> I was just sitting there going, yeah, that's my typical morning. I don't know what. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I should be getting out of bed. Hopefully I'll talk. Right. <laughs> now, exactly. You know, Justin, on this show, we, we cover yeah. the strange and unusual from the, the – um, to Hollywood genre of horror, spookiness, all the way down to real life hauntings, aliens, ghosts. I mean, one day we have a superstar like you. The next day we have a lady that says she's pregnant with three alien babies. So we're all over the board. <laughs> it's kind of like Erie in the end on the radio. Unfortunately, yes, usually when she cool. says she's pregnant with three alien babies, we find out Sean was there a few not, months earlier. Not so. a, <laughs> I actually have a pretty scary demon story. I don't know if you want me to share it. That's what I was going to say. Are you a believer in the supernatural? And if so, tell us some stories. You have to well, tell us know, the story. I, you have yeah, I know, I know. I, I posted it in that way. Frankly, I mean, I, I wasn't quite sure. Of course, I did Eerie as, as, as an 11-year-old, so I was sort of confronted with a lot of paranormal opportunities in terms of uh, what might enter my life, but I never really was confronted with anything ghost-like until I was doing a, a scholarship program in China actually a couple years ago, and I was living in Shanghai for a year, and I was in uh, a very small bed, and I had a roommate, and we were like in a, in a studio. It was a small apartment, yeah. and I woke up at 2 in the morning to this roommate of mine screaming, and I thought, well, that's weird, and then I woke up and I saw a demon alien standing over him, looking at him, and it was terrifying because the demon was very cold. He was putting out this cold, dark energy, and my eyes finally adjusted, and I saw the demon clearly. And my this roommate who was in the room with me, he was a six foot five guy. He was enormous, and he was curled up in a little ball, crying. And finally, the demon disappeared, and that uh, was pretty freaking scary from that moment on we kept the lights on at night i was gonna say did you change rooms <laughs> <laughs> well uh, about about uh, three weeks later i found a different apartment i was like i've got to get out of here obviously it was haunted but fortunately the demon didn't do anything bad to us so that was good jesus that's the next I ju- i'm going to start my own production company simon holmes <laughs> a paranormal investigator that's it right there yes Little, <laughs> <laughs> you, you're all grown up right. you took over that's how it happens I'm writing this yeah, story right yeah. now. No, so you, it's very interesting. You say demon alien. What, what is that? 
Was it? An well, he had. You know, he. I. I mean, I'd never actually seen anything like it. He. He looked a, a little bit like a male version of Marge Simpson. He had a big protruding nose with a big mouth, and he had a bunch of teeth. But he was tall, and he had these sort of alien features with this big mouth, big nose, large teeth, and buggy eyes. But I could tell. I just felt that it was a demon because he was so cold and dark and menacing. Wow. Yeah, it was scary stuff. What did you, it hasn't happened again. How did you guys well, even stay the I, night? I just have to say, Sean, that I am required from orders from our subterranean reptilian overlords yeah. to <laughs> remind people that aliens don't exist. That's right. <laughs> yeah, he's a member of the Man's Club, the uh, the Masons, and I always tell him it's the One World Order they're yeah. trying to do. Yeah, so that's right. Yeah. And, yeah. and aliens and our subterranean reptilian overlords don't exist, Sean. I'm sorry. So. Yeah, and and I was up doing uh, Z Nation just recently up in Spokane, Washington, is where they filmed the show. Ziggy, and that show really. That, yeah, exactly. Iggy, which was a, just a blast. He was awesome to play. I'm hoping that Iggy comes back. I've, I've talked to Carl, and, and Carl said that uh, that maybe Iggy will return. I'm hoping, so i got my fingers crossed. It's, it's you, always you a know. scary concept of having somebody come back to a zombie show. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> well, as Carl said, the good thing is that, that Iggy didn't die at the end of the episode. Clearly, if he died, then he couldn't come back, but he still, he still made it. And, you know, that show is all about zombies, and I'll tell you, those zombies are very scary. Very scary. Yeah. And you're not kidding. We once had Chad Coleman from uh, from Walking Dead on who admitted that he peed himself on the set a little while he was out. <laughs> yeah, he did, man. He pissed his pants. Yeah, a little bit. He peed his pants. Let me check. Right. No, but when you were on the set, you know, getting back to Erie, Indiana, I know I'm going to badger you to death on this one, but I'm sorry. Yeah. I love it. But, uh, you know... As a child, working with actors like Harry Gibson, Michael Pollard, Ray Wilson, what did you? What do you think you took away from these guys? Did you have much face time with them? You had to had to be huge. Uh, I, I, yeah, I did. I mean, you know, in addition, Ray Walston was on Erie. Um, we had uh, Sean Astin, uh, Sean Astin's father, John Astin, who was an incredible actor, who was part of the original Adams Family, Spider Man, you know, and Dead Letters. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yep. Uh, even even Tobey Maguire was on Erie, Indiana, back yeah. when I think he was like 15 yep. or 16. Yep. So we really worked with uh, some fantastic actors. And for me, I mean, I was just soaking it all up and learning as much as possible from them. In fact, I remember going into Ray Walston's trailer and just reading over some lines uh, with him regarding an upcoming episode of Erie. And he just had great insight. You know, he really just told me to, to listen to what the character's choices would be and make strong choices and you know, do a lot of research and background on the character and, you know, think about different things that I hadn't really thought about. I mean, I was, you know, 11, an 11 year old actor. So I, I mean, I gained a, a huge amount of insight from these wonderful actors that had been, you know, acting for 40, 50 years that had come from Broadway and had done a ton of television and film. So I was, I was very fortunate. I'm, I'm still very grateful for that experience. Yeah. Well, it was amazing. And, you know, like you said, the, the writer, the writers, that had a yes. had a, a go on this Erie, Indiana. You know, it's so exciting that you're talking about even a breath, a chance, a hope that something like this could return. And everybody's been talking about the new series uh, on Netflix that's coming up. Have you heard about this? Which one? Oh God, it's uh, of course I'm going to go live on the radio without my information handy. <laughs> so you can, you guys do some filler here. Is it way more fine? You do that to me all the time, Sean. I'm glad you finally did it to yourself. Yeah, one. I just did it to myself. <laughs> I forget what it is. If somebody's in the chat room, maybe you can tell us. Netflix has a new series, and they say it's in Erie, Indiana. Strange Happenings, something like that. Oh, it's called. and it shows okay. two little boys. I heard of it yet. It shows two little boys on bicycles, and it says it's like Erie, Indiana meets X Files meets something else, which of course is a cream pie of awesomeness if it even comes close. Yes, but I think what it's going to be lacking is that comic, that comic relief that came in the middle of kind of spooky. There comes the comedy, then back to spooky, and then the way it left yep. it off. Even when Nathan and I was pitching a television show. Mm -hmm. And Nathan, you got my back on this one because I even said Erie, Indiana for inspiration. They're like, you know how it is. You're pitching it to them. Okay, guys, what's this going right. to be? What's the premise? And I said, I wanted to start something out writing. You know, like having a journal and putting it in the cabinet. And you could lock it away with all the files. It's just like Erie, Indiana. Yeah. 
And it, it's such an amazing premise for a show. I, I just can't believe it's coming back. But you have a product, or that it might come back. But you have a production company. Is there any talks or anything going on? Well, there is talks. I mean, there there is definitely talks uh, in regards to Lionsgate owns the rights to Erie, Indiana. Now it used to be with Hearst Entertainment, and they sold the rights for the television show to Lionsgate. So Lionsgate now owns Erie, Indiana, and it's really up to them whether or not they want to bring the show back. I know that you know I spoke to them, and and Carl spoke to them in terms of a premise for a new show. And um, you know, we're hoping we've got our fingers crossed that they want to make the show again. I, I think that there's. You know, as we talked about, there's a huge fan base out there, and and the show should come back. It needs to be revived, yeah. and uh, you know that's it, it's sort of it's up to them whether or not they're going to make it happen. What do you well, think? Surely, no one would buy the rights to a TV show and then just let it sit around forever doing nothing. Says John Carter. Yeah, <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. Well, that's, that's what, As we know, you know that of course that that happens in the TV world. Well, that's what I was going to say, Justin. I, why? And I don't understand how this happens. Why do they buy the rights to these films that are no longer out there, just for the chance to put them on again, maybe someday? Well, I think. I mean, I don't know too much about it, but I, typically, I think what happens is they end up buying a huge chunk of a library. So they'll buy a bunch of shows, maybe hundreds of shows or thousands of shows. And sort of look through them and, and sort of determine, you know, which one they think has the best chance of bring, coming back. Because, as you guys know, not, not too many things are original now. Everything is, is based on some kind of intellectual property or a book or yeah. a, a comic book um, or, a, you know, a previous television show that already has an established fan base. So, you know, I think they, they see Erie absolutely as, as an opportunity to come back because of the fan base. It's just... It, they have to determine whether or not it's it's worth putting in the in the capital investment to bring a television show back because you know it's many many millions of dollars to have to do that. Um, but you know I think that Erie is is right and perfect for today's audience. So I'm really hoping that they do. Yeah, I'm definitely ready for that, and so is the world. Just like you said, with the X Files that came back out, now everybody's yeah. guessing. Well, David Duchovny, Jillian Anderson, uh, what's going on? Oh, they don't have time, or they can't do this. Well, maybe they will. I, oh my God, I would be chomping at the bit when yeah, when, me too. When something X-Files, so and then, you know, and Twin Peaks is coming back too on Netflix. Yes, Twin it Peaks, is. Which was a big hit right when we did Erie. I think Twin Peaks was on like in 1990 or. 92 so i mean that's coming back people are excited and it really in, in anticipation for for twin peaks x-files came back and it was a tremendous hit and i think they're going to probably do more x-files so i mean now is the time let's do it let's bring yuri back let's do but it right you know now. what i one thing i have to say about tip twin peaks i never got into it because i didn't start at the beginning because you didn't know right. what to expect from it because of the title you hear eerie indiana x-files yeah. dark shadows twin peaks <laughs> true. <laughs> that is you're true. thinking something probably something about a girl in a bikini. Yeah. It just doesn't yeah. Yeah. mesh. But it wasn't. It was it's pretty it was pretty dark and spooky, but uh <laughs> that's true. People are excited it's coming back. I think it's I mean it's David Lynch, so people love Lynch. Oh yeah. Definitely. Now what's your favorite type movies, Justin? Like uh when you're home now or when you were growing up, whenever. Is it horror, drama, action? You know, I, I'm just a lover of movies. I love all types of movies. I've got a pretty eclectic taste. If a film is good, then, then you know, I gravitate towards it. I, as an actor, I, I tend to really like wonderful actors, and I'll, I'll almost see any film that they're in just because I want to go see them act. And, and I love great stories. As long as the story is very well told, for me, it doesn't really matter what genre it's in. I'll, I'll be a fan of it. So, I, you know, my, my sort of... Uh, my my love of films crosses many different uh, art forms and and spectrums. Well, there you go. Hey, what about yeah. <laughs> what about your independent films? Tell us some more about those. Yeah, so I, I wrote and directed and produced a couple independent short films, which you know went on the festival uh, circuit, which was a blast. And you know, recently I've done a couple different web series. And you know, as an actor, you've just got to be sort of firing on all cylinders, and especially nowadays. You've got to write, act, and produce to make your own material um, because it's, you know, we're in a, a pretty competitive industry. So you've got to be doing all these things all the time. Right. But it's fun because you end up taking your own career in your own hands and you can make your own projects happen. I mean, it, at the end of the day, it's all about, you know, how much money you can raise to do a project or if you're just going to shoot it on a shoestring budget, which is 
mostly what I do. Or, you know, you're calling in favors from your friends to help you put together a project, whether it's for them to, you know, bring in the camera or be the director of photographer or hang some lights and, you know, cast some of your actor friends. That's pretty much how a lot of the projects are going down now, unless, you know, you're a big studio with a bunch of money. Right. Is that what you do full time now, Justin? Is it just the, the production company, right? It takes up all your time. Well, it? It's, it, yeah, I mean, it's acting, you know, I'm, I'm fortunate to be able to be an actor and, and do voiceovers. And that's pretty, that's all I've done my whole life. So, you know, I've been in the industry for a long time and, and people sort of know me and, and know what I'm good at. So I, I get to do that. And, and then I go to sort of make my passion projects on the side. So that's, that's where I am. And I'm really hoping Erie comes back because I, I want to come back. I, I want to be a part of the show, and, and I think it would just be wonderful for, for, for the audience and, and the fans of the show originally for it to, to be brought back to life. Oh, yeah, absolutely. People are listening around the world right now, praying that that comes. I've seen the people responding on your Twitter feed, just hearing you coming on the show tonight. Uh, so you right. can imagine with an announcement, oh, by the way, Erie Indiana's coming back. I mean, it would tear the yeah. server up. Yeah, that'd be crazy. I might have to make that rumor up, Nathan. <laughs> do it, do it. Hand, it started Sean. here. It started, you know, when Erie comes back, we can say it started on this show. That's so, right. uh, you know, you guys will be the, the tip of the iceberg. We'll have to have you on the show when Erie's back. How fun would that be for Simon to go on a radio show, oh. and it's your show, and you, we're talking about being in Erie. That'd be pretty cool. That would be awesome, man. And I... I, yeah. I <laughs> <laughs> See, he's got me fired up, Justin. This is why you're a great actor and director. You get the actors fired up, and then you go, okay, guys, pump the brakes. We're not there yet. But, uh, no, that's uh, that that would be amazing. And I, I just I always think that why hasn't anybody caught on to this yet? Because sooner it's a sleeping giant that's going to wake again. I'm afraid somebody's going to beat us to the punch, you know, that has the money. I know. I agree. I agree. We've got, we've got to make it happen because, uh, as you said, you know, the other shows are coming out and sort of, stealing from Erie and, and saying that they're an Erie meets X-Files. But what about, you know, they brought X-Files. We need to bring Erie back so right, that yeah. the fans can, can enjoy it. There can be a, a new storyline. We can see where it's going to develop. And, and Erie can be on for 10 new seasons. We need, you know, 10 years of Erie would be awesome. Now, you got to squash this this rumor, Justin. I, and I've heard it for okay. years. You, It's been all over the Internet that you were cast in the cult hit classic Hocus Pocus, that you were being considered for a position. People are saying, no, it never happened. Others say, yes, you were, and you stepped away. What's the story? Hocus Pocus? No, that was Omri. Omri was in Hocus Pocus. No, I know. They said you were, because you guys are awesome together, they thought that yeah. you had been cast too. You know, I mean, it was many years ago. I don't think so. I, 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 I think, unfortunately, I have to squash that rumor. I wish that was true, oh. but I don't believe I was being considered for Hocus Pocus, the film. I I did. I was cast, but unfortunately turned down the film Pleasantville. And um, but I but not Hocus Pocus. Although that would have been a fun movie to shoot with Omri and Beth Midler. And I mean, that was that's such a great cold classic. You got to love it. Oh, you got to. It was like Erie, Indiana. It's right up there with it. But do you yeah. ever get back? What happened to Omri? You don't hear much about him. There was tales that he went back to being a hairstylist or something like that. I think so. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I ran into Omri. I would say probably seven eight years ago in L.A just happened to be we happened to be grabbing lunch at the same spot and i was like oh man what's going on so we caught up for a bit and yeah i think he's you know he was in the industry for quite a while and and he just sort of wanted to go in a different direction and i think that he's now doing a, a full-time hairstylist thing so that's cool but maybe if erie comes back to you know be fantastic if he wanted to to join up or there was a it was a part for him because he's a wonderful actor, and it'd be so great to get uh, Marshall and Simon back together. Yeah, it would. Now, listen, every guest we have come on, every special guest, not every guest, every special guest <laughs> like yourself, because you're deep in my heart here, we have a oh, special you. trivia. And I, it's, all it, right. It's famous all over the world. Jay Leno talks about it. You know, everybody. <laughs> it's it's the G&D show trivia. This one's the Erie, Indiana trivia, where you're going to get well, – some of them will be multiple choice. Some won't. Um, and you'll have two minutes after I ask the question, you'll have not two minutes for each one, but you have two minutes for the whole thing. I play the Jeopardy music, okay, which isn't copyrighted. So it's not Jeopardy. It's Jeopardy, not it's Jeopardy. Jeopardy esque. Yeah, Jeopardy esque. Jeopardy esque. Okay, I got gotcha. you. We don't uncopyright information. But anyway, we're going to do that. Nathan, you're going to start the clock. 
I am. That's and we're right. going to see if you can get, because this is all Area Indiana, man. Now, you're the star. You're one of the stars of Area Indiana. So, you know, this is for street cred here, man. I know, but I have to give a little asterisk saying that we did Erie, I think, 25 years ago. So, you know, my, my, my memory may have faded. So if I get some of these wrong, don't blame me. <laughs> no excuse. No. Okay. So I'm going to try to read these and control the music. Nathan, can you I've start got, the clock? I've got the clock right here, Sean. Okay. And we're going to go. Are you ready, Justin? I'm ready. Let's do this. Here we go. Nine questions, guys. GD Show, Erie, Indiana trivia. Yeah. First one, episode 19, Broken Record. What is the name of the band that Todd McNilly is obsessed with? Oh, it was the, was it the, the surfer band? Yeah, it was close enough. Pitbull Surfers, number two. In episode 18, Reality Takes a Holiday. Are you ready? Reality Takes a Holiday. At the end, what type of car does Dash X drive up in? Is it a, a think Cadillac? Back, think Back to the Future. Oh, uh, 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 what are those called? A, a Dorian. A Delo- Dorian. Delorean. Okay, number three. In what episode does the meaning of the plus and the minus on the back of Dash X ads become known? This is three options. Tornado Days. Mr. Cheney, the loyal order of the corn. The, lo- the order of the corn. That's right. Number four, episode 12, Tornado Days. The sister city to Erie, Indiana becomes known. What's the name? Is it Silentville, Tennessee, Oddball, Oregon, or normal Illinois. I think it's normal Illinois. That's right. <laughs> Number five in episode <laughs> ten, the Lost Hour. Who did we find out was the old milkman from an alternate universe? Marshall Teller, Simon Holmes, or Dash X? Uh, Dash X. Marshall Teller. He missed that one. Cut it out. Marshall. Yes. Oh my right. god. Oh. In episode six, just say no for fun. What are the names of the funny nose glasses used to make you laugh to break your trance? XM80s, TP42s, or GM2020s? TP42s? No, GM2020s. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, number seven. The name of the Erie, Indiana school that is your character, Simon Holmes School. Uh, or the, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, character Simon Holmes attends is George Washington, Erie Public, or B.F. Skinner Junior High School. Erie Public. Nope, B.F. Skinner Junior High School. No! <laughs> okay, number eight. Episode three, ATM with a heart of gold. What was the name you called the ATM? Mr. Peters, Mr. Chance, or Mr. Wilson? Mr. Wilson. That's right. Number nine. How many towns in Indiana are named Erie? Zero, one, or two? Zero. <laughs> we made it through. We made it through, but he got four of the nine wrong. And the the answer to that: How many towns in Indiana are named Erie? It's actually two, but they're spelled E R I E. See, I knew that. I knew that. That's why I didn't say E R I E. So I actually got it right. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You were right. He was right. Oh, Those were great questions. They Thank were you. awesome. I Thank you. That was fun. I did my homework. Well, you still get credit. Totally did. So out of nine, you got. Well, he he missed four, so it's still good. Okay, I still pass. Passing grade. Yeah, (laughs) government work. Anyway, Justin, I know we're running out of time, brother, but you know we love you, we support you, and anytime you have something going on, brother, you can come right here on the G and D show, and we'll support you. Where can our listeners find out more about you? Well, please, uh, thank you so much. You can go to my Twitter at twitter.com slash Justin Shankalo or facebook.com slash Justin Shankaro, or my website, justinshankaro.com. And thank you guys so much. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, Nathan, for having me on your awesome show. This was such a blast talking about Erie and some of the other projects I've worked on and, and talking about spookiness and paranormal. And, and I absolutely will reach out to you uh, about upcoming projects, and hopefully we'll have some good words soon if Erie's coming back and right. we can talk about it live on your show. Well, you know, oh, yeah. e- e- you know, we were just talking earlier about how sometimes you're not allowed to talk about things in advance. But right. when we had William B. Davis on the show and he said, well, they couldn't bring the smoking man back. He died. And we yeah. went, come on, William. He said, well, I suppose it could happen. <laughs> uh, and then he came back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, right, as Nathan, we, as we were chatting right before the show, you know, as actors, we've got to sign these NDA agreements about every project now. The studios are, are so worried about secrets getting out because they spend so much money bringing these projects to fruition. So there are a couple of cool things that I'm working on, and 
and hopefully I'll be able to talk to you guys about them soon. And, well, you know and when they're ready. So much. You know when they're ready. Just shoot us an email. We'd love to talk. Okay. To you. Well, all right. I tell you Fantastic. what, I will. Justin, stay on the line one second so we can talk to you after the show, and we're going to pay the bills. How about that? All right. Sounds great. Thank you guys again. You rock. You, you rock, rock, sir. Wow, Nathan. <laughs> what do you think, huh? Justin Shankaro, Erie, Indiana. Do we so have to more? go? This was the perfect way yeah. to come back from vacation. Yeah, it was. Let's pay the bill. Special thanks to all our homes, all our sponsors, Stitcher, Smart Radio, Planet Paranormal, Paranormal Wave Radio, Canadian Network, Attentive Home Healthcare, good people ready to help the ones you love, especially if you're in Indianapolis, Indiana, because that's where they're at. Check them out, attentivehhc.com, the SYL Project, share some love, give some love. Everybody needs some love, the SYL Project.com. From the haunted back roads of America, this has been another exclusive g d Show interview. Don't go change in America. You know we won't. Demon Hunter. Because we love you. Night, guys.